So you guys have been waiting for it and it's finally here. This is the Ryzen APUs. First off, we have the Ryzen 3 2200G. Comes in at 99 USD or if you're in Australia, 139 Australian dollars. Now it has four cores, four threads and onboard Radeon Vega graphics. Besides that is the Ryzen 5, the big brother. 2400G, four cores, eight threads and also a beefier Radeon 11 Vega graphics solution on board. Now this costs 169 USD or if you're in Australia, 235 Australian dollars. Now, today's comparison, you guys requested it. This is everything you guys requested in the previous video. We scrapped all the games that we had planned for this video and tested it with the ones that you guys requested. Competitive multiplayer titles, and we're testing it against the competition in a similar price bracket, RX 550, and also a GT 1030 from Nvidia. So, the games that we're testing, PUBG, CSGO, Dota 2, Fortnite, GTA 5 and Rainbow Six Siege, and we're testing them at playable settings. So we're generally gonna be looking for more than 60 FPS, and for instance, in PUBG, I had to drop it down to 720p because it was just not playable at 1080p on any of these graphics solutions. But with that aside, let's get on with those results that y'all came to see. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and pulling up the first of the numbers, Dota 2. Now, you'll notice from the numbers we've got here, three different memory speeds across the 2400G and also the 2200G. This is to give you guys an idea of how performance will scale across the APUs with faster memory. So if you wish to go purchase faster memory, you'll know what you can expect with that more expensive purchase, or if you just wanna overclock your memory high enough to get that extra performance itself. Also with the GT 1030 and the RX 550, I tested that on the Ryzen 3 1200 with the exact same memory that I tested on this uh, APU solution as well. This is, I believe, the most real world close comparison you'll get to the APUs because we're using a similar CPU, clocked out to 3.5 gigahertz, by the way, and also in terms of value, you're coming pretty close to the APUs. Even though the APUs are coming in cheaper in the one dedicated solution, it's still getting more real world than say an 8700K in a GT 1030, for example. But what we can see here with the Dota 2 results, the APU is getting really close to the GT 1030. The RX 550 is pulling away by a little bit in this game, and you will see this trend continue across different games. Looking at CSGO, we can see here that the RX 550, again, was leading the pack. The GT 1030 did come in second place, and then the 2400G scaled down with the 2200G in terms of its memory speeds, and of course, its bigger, beefier GPU solution. But what we saw also with the 0.1% uh, lows was that in that smoke section, it was really low. This was uh, not an enjoyable experience on any of the graphics solutions uh, put forth in this test here, but it was at 1080p and I did copy a very uh, popular pro CSGO player's settings. His name was Scream and he uses uh, these custom settings. I'll just pull them up for you guys. Even though the resolution is a little bit higher, I personally enjoy playing this game at 16 by nine. And now the next game we're pulling up for you guys is Fortnite 1080p settings as well. This was on the lowest possible settings uh, because this is where the uh, 2400G and the 2200G really had a smooth experience. Keep in mind, you'll see by some of those 0.1% lows while I was benchmarking, there was some dips. And now I did update the BIOS on this MSI motherboard to the latest BIOS and it did help a little bit, but the stuttering or the drops or the choking as I'd call it was still present in some of the benchmarking. You can see that with those numbers. The RX 550 and also the GT 1030 did not exhibit this behavior. And the GT 1030 scored a little victory over the 2400G, but then the RX 550 scored a little victory over the GT 1030. So either way, across all these solutions here, Fortnite was really enjoyable at 1080p and you could play it on a budget. So next up here, we got GTA 5, a popular title requested by you guys. And what we could see with the numbers here was it scaled in tandem, pretty much just like the other games. The memory speeds did affect performance just a little bit, but what we saw just like Fortnite was some very odd stuttering occurring. And that did show in some of the benchmarks with the 0.1% lows on the Ryzen APU solutions. The GT 1030 did score a ever so slight victory over the RX 550. And then of course the RX 550 came in just a little bit faster than the 2400G. But either way, 1080p on normal settings with GTA 5, a playable experience on all four of these solutions yet again. And now pulling up the second last game on display is Rainbow Six Siege. 1080p lower settings, though I did set the resolution scale to 100%. 
as I believe setting it below this, it just makes the game look horrible in my opinion. At 100% lower settings, it looked pretty good. And the benchmark numbers showed that the RX 550 scored the victory. And it was good to see that the APU in this particular title, the 2400G, did score a victory over the GT 1030. So the GT 1030, uh, was really falling behind in this game in my opinion, uh, but it was good to see that the RX 550 and the 2400G were leading the race with really good frame rates and this was a playable experience on all four solutions, but I will give the edge to both the APU and the RX 550. And now I'm saving the worst for the last game here. This is PUBG. Even though the game is very enjoyable, it is still pretty badly optimized, at least for PC. And what we saw with the results here was the 2400G um, did get some decent frame rates. And now I had to drop it down to 720p because 1080p was not playable on all four solutions here. It was just horrible. Uh, there was stuttering present on all four at 1080p. Uh, the stuttering was horrible on the APUs at 1080p. But when I dropped it down to 720p, we did get some frame rates that were pretty decent and I could have a fun time. Keep in mind the stuttering at 720p was still present in the 2400G and also the 2200G. But what we saw were frame rates that were pretty decent. I mean, the 2400G uh, went close to 50 FPS. Uh, the 2200G did struggle a bit, especially with those 0.1% lows uh, at 720p, but the RX 550 did score the victory here with 59 FPS. So coming very close to that 60 mark and the 1030 getting close to the 50 mark. So it was a clear victory for the RX 550 and the 2400G scored very close I think actually getting right on the money with the GT 1030 in this benchmark. And now quickly for some synthetics, Ryzen on the Cinebench scores here, the APUs scored just like they would with the Ryzen CPU solution. So getting some good numbers. And then for the power consumption, the APUs did extremely well, especially on those idle wattage numbers. I was surprised at what I was seeing. Uh, max load, this solution uh, fully under load in CSGO was scoring around about 56 watts max with the memory overclocked. So I uh, did beat the GT 1030 and also the RX 550 solutions by a little bit. And so if you want to put this in a home theater PC, you are going to be getting very good uh, performance, but also very good efficiency out of these two APU solutions, especially the 2400G with its four cores and its eight threads. So there's the numbers for you guys and you will have to excuse me. It is uh, very hot in the Gold Coast at the moment and I don't have my air con for another few days. So I have to bear with the heat and get this review done for you guys. But what we saw with those benchmark numbers was some impressive figures. The APU solutions are here and they are here to stay. The $99 2200G impressed me the most. It had some really good performance figures, especially with those low memory speeds. You could still get an enjoyable experience on Dota 2, CSGO, and even Fortnite. So if you're into playing those very popular multiplayer titles, I think Fortnite's got over 3.4 million concurrents at one time, so it's very popular. Then something like this, and some uh, DDR4 memory, if you can pick it up, maybe an eight gigabyte dual channel kit, will give you a very good experience at 1080p, or if you wanna step it down to 720p, we'll do that too. Now for overclocking the APUs and also these other GPUs, I didn't have time for that. I will get another dedicated video doing uh, both overclocking and also I will be testing a single stick of memory. A lot of you guys requested that. So don't worry, I do read those requests and I will get them done in the next week for you guys. I'll also be comparing it to the HD graphics as well, but I will give you guys a spoiler. The reason I didn't put the HD graphics in this uh, comparison was in the past, I've tested the uh, Coffee Lake HD graphics solution and that, at, for instance, at 720p lower settings. Now, the uh, PUBG benchmarks you saw here was 100% screen scale. In the HD graphics, when I tested that, I had a 70% lower settings possible in PUBG and that couldn't even get up to 20 FPS. So these Ryzen APUs were getting near 50 FPS and that was 100% screen scale. So if I dropped that down to 70, it'd probably get 60. So it was like at least uh, three times better than the HD graphics solution, at least from the PUBG numbers. So HD graphics are really sort of in a lower league than all the four solutions on the table here today. So I will do another video on that soon, but what we saw here was a little value king that's coming in and it's sort of overshadowed a little bit with DDR4 RAM prices because you saw with those benchmarks, you will want fast DDR4 memory and you wanna overclock it to get the most out of these APUs. But the problem is, is with those prices being so high, you're probably gonna to have to settle for 2400 megahertz DDR4 memory and hope to clock it to 2666. So if you do that, 
you'll get some decent performance, especially out of the 2400G. But of course, being on a budget, that extra 70 USD, I'm not sure where my recommendation is going because I am torn between the two. 99 USD, I do like the 2200 just a little bit more. I think it represents excellent value for money, especially for someone who wants new parts, doesn't want to mingle with used parts, and wants pretty decent gaming performance on a budget. This is the one I'm leaning towards, and they both include Wraith uh, Stealth coolers, by the way. And the cooling solution is pretty good. If you turn up the fan speed to 100%, which is what I did for the benchmarks, you'll uh, notice absolute very low noise, and you'll still get a really good experience. So there's the numbers for you guys, and these two graphics cards here, the GT1030 and the RX 550, they're practically made irrelevant in my opinion, um, unless of course you wanna get a really cheap uh, used CPU and used motherboard and you want um, and you can't buy a graphics card anyway. Surprisingly enough, the RX 550 is actually sold out in America. I guess people are that desperate for eth mining that they're putting these things now on their uh, probably 19 slot motherboards. Now also talking about mining with the 2200G and 2400G, I'm actually not going to be talking about it here today because I just don't think there's much value in buying one of these and then going out and getting a motherboard, memory, SSD, power supply, all to mine off something that's pretty much entry level in terms of its graphics performance. So at least compared to a dedicated GPU solution. So didn't really see the value from doing that testing though if you guys want to see it. Uh, and lately I've sort of copped a lot of flack for doing testing with crypto. So I'm sort of on a bit of a cool down here, but if you really want to see it, uh, drop a comment, let me know if you want to see it or not. But in terms of AMD and these APUs and what they've done with them, I really like these solutions. Low powered, work well with the included coolers. You can overclock both the graphics solution and the CPU solution from the BIOS as well. I will be bringing that in another video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this dedicated review here today. If you did, then be sure to slap that like button and let me know in the comment section below if you wanna see some other tests. I'm gonna be doing the single stick of memory, the overclocking as well. I'll be doing that in another video, but if there's some other tests you wanna see, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be getting that done for you guys. But as it stands, the 2200G, little value king, especially for the money. Besides that, the 2400G is its big brother Great for people who want that real small solution. And as you saw in my previous video, I put this thing in the in-win in chopping and it was a great solution. I mean, it was small. It's got the powerful little graphics on it and it's also got the four cores, eight threads. So both solutions hit the market really well in my opinion. I've also got a giveaway coming with the 2400G. I'll be doing that in a separate video, teaming up with some other tech channels as well. So stay tuned for that. Full mini ITX PC. This thing's gonna be so small. So powerful, great for mobile video editing as well. Look forward to giving you guys that video too. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. I'll pull up the first game, Dota 2. And what you can see here... Just do the Japanese way, you. And on the GT 1030, that scored pretty well. The and now the next game we're going to pull up for you guys is Fortnite. So this is how I mounted the SSD for benchmarking. Usually you're meant to screw it down, but if I screwed it down on this motherboard for some reason, it just didn't work. So yeah, I just left it up for benchmarking. That's whatever it takes to get the numbers. Let's do it. Yikes, that wasn't meant to happen. But it's got strong pins on it, so you don't have to worry.